Rick, Marty, and Craig Tester reluctantly purchased the sword, at my urging, on the remote chance it could be real. We always knew it would have to be professionally tested. We never claimed otherwise. Testing it on camera, however, was essential if we were ever going to quiet Mr. Pulitzer. Therefore, purchasing the sword was done to, a, test it to see if it could be real, b, discredit Mr. Pulitzer and, c, create compelling television. Kevin Burns, January 2016 The alleged off-camera testing results of the Oak Island fake Roman sword by Joven Hutton Pulitzer, done presumably in August 2014, have never been seen by the public as of April 2017. The Oak Island fake Roman sword was inspected and tested professionally in the chemistry laboratories at St. Mary's University in Halifax. Dr. Krista Brasso determined nine elements within the Oak Island fake Roman sword, including seven base metals. The sword is dominantly made of brass, with lesser amounts of other elements. The brass in the souvenir sword is an alloy composed of 56% copper and 35% zinc. The sword also has a 2.6% lead component and four other base metals exist in trace amounts. Modern era brass is determined by having zinc content above a lower threshold of 28%. Here's a percent composition of the main elemental components and so what you see is the zinc content is fairly high um, and so that suggests a modern brass. Yeah, you're, we're getting close to my 1950. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think yeah. you're... Those metal tests that they showed on the screen at being zinc do not match the on-site uh, XFR test at all. In fact, the XFR test do not show anywhere near that zinc and actually register arsenic as opposed to zinc, which is dead on. And they're trying to say their test registered zinc. Now, zinc would be a brass. Yes, it is a Catholic university. And uh, so why didn't they mention all the ancient metals? Why didn't they mention that there's arsenic in it, which is the dead giveaway? And why did they say high-level zincs? So uh, we're going to discuss it with uh, our team here, figure out what to do. Uh, probably the best thing to do is just release the XFR test results. And so you can see for yourself, because the bottom line is... That is not what XFR testing showed on that sword. Even before Pulitzer's initial reaction to the official testing by St. Mary's University of the Souvenir Sword, he made a video presentation stating the presence of multiple other elements including his first claims of gold and silver. This video has since been deleted from the public record. Nonetheless, the gold claim was documented in an online article, along with other online claims of lodestone magnetite, platinum, and palladium in early 2016, and cadmium in early 2017, and iridium as claimed through an associate in April 2017. Pulitzer also attempted to release a digital report regarding the sword over three days in March of 2016. The initial release was an incomplete corrupted file. The second release was an oversized 3.7 gigabyte document that could not be opened except by disassembling its component parts. The third version was a 560 megabyte document that had video links removed but could still not be effectively opened. More than four months later in July, a PDF version of the document was released that finally could be reviewed. In this document Pulitzer copied and pasted a list of the ten common metals in use at the height of the Roman Empire. This list was taken from Wikipedia and accompanying text was also copied and pasted but cited incorrectly. Pulitzer claimed this list was exactly representative of his XRF results for the Oak Island fake Roman sword. Six of the ten elements from the list are coincidental to the fake sword but four are not present. In addition to these four, Pulitzer has claimed five other elements are present. This results in a total of nine elements claimed that were never officially found in the fake sword. To date. In the spring of 2017, from his initial claims of metallurgy in late 2015 he has never released his alleged XRF results. Likewise he has never released a proper description of his testing methodology.
Likewise he has never released the results of any other implied comparative tests on other artifacts. Likewise he has never released evidence of claims of artifacts in museum collections that have metallurgy that allegedly match his alleged results. Subsequent tests of two other souvenir swords from the sword gate inventory, identified as number 3 California and number 4 Italian eBay, were done by Dr. Brasso in early 2017. These swords were also confirmed to be modern brass, consisting of 31% and 29% zinc respectively, and 59% and 63% copper respectively. Pulitzer over the last year very quickly reversed the claim of his alleged results showing zinc content well below the results from St. Mary's. He has accepted the St. Mary's results in a bizarre contradiction while concurrently attacking the St. Mary's results through his sword report. He has changed his story in an attempt to corroborate high zinc content with ancient brass. Using only two sentences from a single misinterpreted online reference, he has based his defective claim on a statement regarding modern brass, not a statement regarding ancient brass. This mistake is very clear. The reference reads as follows, brass, an alloy of zinc that contains between 55% and 95% copper, is probably the best known zinc alloy. Brass was first used about 2,500 years ago and was widely used by the ancient Romans, who used it to make such things as coins, kettles and decorative items. This quotation is not stating that ancient Roman brass had high zinc content. The first sentence is generic to modern brass and these statements are generic to a short rudimentary passage that does not represent specific research. Pulitzer has gone on to claim ancient mine sites in no less than three locations in Germany, the Levant, and in Spain, are sources of high levels of zinc. He has never provided formal evidence or analysis to support any of these claims. Further complicating these assertions is that the alleged foundry for these swords is several hundreds of miles away in Naples, as based on the online description attached to the alleged matching sword in a Florida collection. Seventy pages of Pulitzer's attempted sword report are copied and pasted, word for word and figure by figure, from an article by David Dungworth entitled Iron Age and Roman Copper Alloys from Northern Britain, as found in the journal, Internet Archaeology, published by the Council of British Archaeology. Pulitzer does not cite the source properly and has put his own copyright statement on this appropriation. While several literature references can be used to corroborate that ancient era brass had lower zinc content than modern era brass, using the exact reference that Pulitzer infringed upon shows why he is in error. Dungworth found that the mean percent of zinc in Roman artifacts in the 2nd century AD was approximately 8%. The exact graphs shown here from Dunworth's article are also copied in Pulitzer's report and they clearly show by date and by reign that zinc content is relatively low by the 2nd century. The 2nd century is key to Pulitzer's fabrications of Roman incursions beyond Europe. Pulitzer has in fact put reference information in his sword report that very clearly shows he is wrong. We have top men working on it right now. Who? Top men. 